Disney Plus has been around since 2019 and has produced mostly nothing but crap. But that begs the question, what is the worst thing that this platform has released? Now, a couple things. One, this is only going to be things that I've seen, so if you're expecting the new Doctor Who to be on here, it will not be, even though that would probably take at least the number two spot. Also... One of the things that did not make the list, even though it should have, was the 2022 Pinocchio remake, because I already had two other live-action remakes on here, and it felt like it was just taking up too much of the list, so I left that one off. But the other ten, these more than deserve to be on the list, so let's get started. Number ten is a movie that I reviewed, one of the first movies I ever reviewed and I have not even thought about in years, is Artemis Fowl. I haven't read the book, but I've heard it's not very close to the novel, and even still, I have a hard time believing the novel could be worse than this movie. The acting is bland out of everybody, the effects are mediocre, the directing is kind of sloppy, the editing is a mess. And the story is just boring. The kid never even leaves the house. Apparently, there's there was a lot of reshoots that went into this film and a lot of re-editing because there were many, many scenes from the movie or from the trailer, including ones where he's actually not at the house that never appear in the film. So I'm wondering just how much was cut from this movie. Number nine is something that I just reviewed and it's Descendants The Rise of Red. The first three Descendants are already bad Disney Channel movies. They make no sense and just the premise is dumb as hell. They tried their hardest. They got people that were really talented for those movies. They were just stuck with the wrong project. This one just felt doomed from the start. The story is even worse than the last ones. The characters aren't very likable. The songs are terrible. Terrible this time around, even worse so than the third movie. The auto tuning is insufferable, and the ending is just it's so rushed that it feels like nothing happens. That the all the time travel consequences are chucked out the window for possibly shoving it into a sequel. Lovely. Number eight is something I couldn't even finish, and that's She-Hulk Attorney at Law. I got about halfway through episode four before deciding, you know what, I don't have to watch everything the MCU puts out. And I still haven't seen Miss Marvel or Echo, even though I've been meaning to, but this feels like bottom of the barrel MCU. I like the MCU, I like a lot of the stuff they've put out recently, even though everybody likes to bitch about everything. I'm actually very looking, very much looking forward to Deadpool and Wolverine next week, and how even Captain America Brave New World actually looks like it has some potential, as long as they don't shove a lot of political garbage into it. But She-Hulk is just cringy. There's no other word for it. It's cringy. It's embarrassing. The dialogue, the acting, the effects, everything about it is bottom of the barrel MCU. There is not a single movie in the MCU's catalog that's even near this level of bad. Hell, there are many of the Fox movies that aren't even on this level of bad. Maybe Dark Phoenix, but that's about it. Number seven is Home Sweet Home Alone. And by the way, I forgot another honorable mention. Dairy of Wimpy Kid. So, number seven, Home Sweet Home Alone, another reboot that nobody asked for, or hell, it's not even a reboot, because this takes place in the same universe as the first two movies, because of fucking course it does. But again, this just felt like another cash grab sequel that nobody wanted, nobody asked for, yet we got anyway. The main character is one of the most unlikable pieces of shit I've seen in movies, well... That may not be true anymore, but it was at the time, to the point where the robbers were technically supposed to be the heroes of this movie because they were just trying to get something back that he stole from them, and yet they're being tortured for it. Is this still ass backwards to anybody else? I'm assuming most people forgot this movie existed, and you should be so lucky. Number six, the first Star Wars one on this list, what was that, is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, I'm shocked it's this high as well. This should be, this should have been top five from how bad it is, but Disney Plus has put out some bad stuff. This completely destroys the entire continuity of Star Wars. There is no reason why he should be abandoning Luke on Tatooine. Reva just completely destroys the story just by her mere presence here. But especially when she goes after the Lars family in episode 6, which is just pure padding at that point. No one cared about Reva, which made it clear when they tried to sell a Reva lightsaber and they couldn't even get proper funding for it because no fans wanted to support this. 
And they make Darth Vader, they turn Darth Vader into an idiot. They make Grand Inquisitor some attention-seeking glory hog for some fucking reason, which is not what he was in Rebels. Even to the point where the actors of both Grand Inquisitor and Fifth Brother avoided watching Rebels. Really. Yeah, no, this this was the breaking point for a lot of Star Wars fans that weren't already broken by Rise of Skywalker, and the ones that w weren't broken by this, well, we'll get to that in a minute. Number five is Peter Pan and Wendy. Talk about being doomed from the start. This was one of the most ridiculed trailers ever leaked on the internet, even more so than the Little Mermaid trailer, a movie that came out less than a month after this one hit Disney+. Plus. I didn't see a single positive review of this one. There were plenty of shills that tried to defend Little Mermaid or Obi-Wan Kenobi, but there were none who tried to defend Peter Pan and Wendy. The 11% audience score basically tells you all you need to know. The acting's not, it's hit and miss. I think the guy who played Peter was actually pretty good. He was just in the wrong role. Of course, they race swapped Tinkerbell for literally no reason because this character has no dialogue. Then you have the lost vase. Hook looks ridiculous. He even though Jude Law sounded like perfect casting, but I guess he just wasn't given right direction and the costume design looked weird. Really, the only highlight in this was Jim Gaffigan as Smee, which was probably the only decent casting in this entire film. Number four, another Disney live-action remake is Mulan. Dishonor. That's how you describe this movie. Dishonor. This movie fucking sucks. It dis This is not just a bad remake. This isn't even of the shot-for-shot -shot remake type of bad like Beauty and the Beast and Lion King. It is insulting to the original where they try to make this girl boss version of Mulan where her entire lesson is stop hiding your power. Really? Not the lesson of the original where... In the, okay, so let me put this in a different perspective. In the original, she she had to actually learn how to fight. She's She went off not really knowing what she was doing. She went off pure desperation, and but she eventually built herself up into an actual warrior. Here, she's just perfect right off the bat, even to the point when she was a little kid, she probably could have fight, fought in that army from how they were showing it. It's ridiculous, and it was cringy as hell, and it seemed that was one of the points where the audiences started slipping on Disney. Number three, a movie I, I barely got one minute into and it's cheaper by the dozen. And if you saw my review, I don't need to elaborate anymore because it was all woke, pandering garbage. And that's literally all the movie was, so I couldn't even get a minute into it. And no, I refuse to watch another second of that film, and I never will. So, don't ask. Moving on, number two, you might be surprised this isn't number one, and it's Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Or I fake Percy Jackson. It's Perry Johnson and the Wolfians. I've made so many videos on this show that I feel like I don't need to explain it anymore. The casting was terrible. The dialogue was awful. The effects were garbage. The action sequences were basically non-existent. And Raritan made a big deal of jerking himself off about how faithful this was to the novel when really it was probably even less faithful than the movie adaptation from 2010. Which is pretty surprising because the movie wanted to do its own thing. It seems like people finally woke up to how shitty this series was after the Lotus Casino episode. And it's and for all the people that are claiming this is one of the biggest Disney shows ever, it seems to have been pretty much forgotten about by a lot of people ever since the show ever since season one ended. And even the people who tried to defend this show seems like they've acknowledged that it'd be very unlikely this thing gets past season two. And finally, number one. The Acolyte. I refuse to call this Star Wars The Acolyte, because this isn't Star Wars. This is lesbian fan fiction by Leslie Headland. And it just happens to feature lightsabers and the word Jedi. That's about all it connects to Star Wars. The dialogue is some of the cringiest I've ever heard. None of the characters are likable, except for the one guy they try to paint as a fucking villain. They don't understand how anything in the Star Wars universe works, starting with the Force and even down to lightsabers in the final episode. The villain is dumb, and that helmet is not as intimidating as they think. I don't know what putting the smiley face on it. Was that supposed to be intimidating? Like, the smiley thing from, what was it, 2012 when that stupid-ass horror movie was made? That low-budget horror movie? I have no idea what the thought process was here. I guess it was Kathleen Kennedy saying, get the most... Get the most... 
unqualified, there we go, unqualified people to write a Star Wars show, basically say, fuck Star Wars, do whatever you want, make your lesbian fan fiction, don't bother about actually trying to make a good Star Wars show for Star Wars fans, tell Star Wars fans to go fuck themselves, cry when Star Wars fans don't want to watch your show, and then have your show most likely cancelled. That seems to, that's the best approximation of Disney Plus right there. They put out something, it fails, they blame the fans, and the cycle just continues. It's all just political propaganda at this point. I guess there were a couple things on here that weren't like Artemis Fowl, but that was just a straight up terrible movie. Everything else on here had some form of political propaganda. Well, I guess Home Sweet Home Alone didn't either, but again, that was just another awful movie. And I'm to, honestly, Disney Plus should just go under. They just need to scrap it. There are several things on here that they that needs to get the willow treatment and just be taken off as a tax write-off. That includes the Acolyte, especially. And I get them wanting to keep Percy Jackson on there because they put way too much into the marketing on that one to just write it off. But ones like Cheaper by the Dozen and Home Sweet Home Alone and all those others just need to be gone. And honestly, I have no faith in anything that comes out of Disney Plus anymore. Ever, and you shouldn't either. So let me let me know what you guys uh, thought of this list. If you guys have something else that I missed or didn't mention, leave it in the comments below, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.